Episode 9 was without a doubt one of the most entertaining batshit crazy episodes of JoJo that just was summed down to a game of catch that in very JoJo fashion turned into a bloody nightmare. With episode 10 introducing Weather Report and, I mean, Jumping Jack, that was an insane gravity fight there. And, I mean, the stakes are getting raised. I mean, I was wondering a couple videos back, like, what the mid season kind of like break where I guess the first of three part break would be and I guess the courtyard seems to be what I was wondering like are they going to be able to get the first disc to the foundation or not and honestly things aren't looking too good for them right now but I guess we'll see with tomorrow's video but episode 9 I really do want to talk about this one first and foremost sometimes I jump around with the two episodes but I want to go in order because I was blown away I was almost considering doing a video just for episode 9 because that's how much I loved it but the idea of a game of catch, because we knew, I mean, we're finally getting into the big bad, we've seen his stand for a while, now we see the father, everything's starting to line up, and the idea of him putting Dis into this girl, who I guess is apparently quite a gambler, I mean, Hermes pretty much knew her from her own floor and stuff, so... The idea of kind of like betting and stuff I think is interesting because in prison money definitely makes the world go round even more so than general society. We've seen it from the phones, you have to probably pass at least a 50 to even get a chance to use a phone. You know, money is very important and those who don't have it probably aren't going to have any sort of luxuries that they're naturally supposed to have but now have been kind of like chained down by bribing guards and bribing other inmates. So the idea of a simple bet like basically making $100 for playing catch with new best girl slash best robot I guess is how we could call Foo Fighters who gets a little too pissy when the water cup is about to be drank. But I love the idea that just 13 more throws you know we get 100 bucks and then it's like okay but what about a thousand and you knew they shouldn't take that bet but at the same time I don't think anyone was assuming that a liver or a heart would be ripped out if you didn't have a thousand dollars to pay back more so i was expecting it to be the disc or something to that nature i thought that was what the gamble was going to be and when we get introduced to marilyn manson the debt collector and to see how brutal it is not only ripping the money from the breast that she hides it in to then ripping the liver out holy absolute Shit, I was not expecting that whatsoever. It was a creative design, the idea of almost like the eyes roll into how much money you owe. If you make a bet with her, basically if any form of cheating is seen, the debt collector will come and it doesn't matter if you see how they cheated, the debt collector will know. It was very interesting that Kiss was enough to call out the BS, but when it came to obviously stone free it didn't but still it was fun to see how that escalated because what i love about the prison setting is the limitations i mentioned it in the previous video about how like you know for someone like jolene if she didn't have to play by the rules to stay in that prison it'd probably be a lot easier for her to get around but the simple idea of needing money or keeping the bet going because if a guard stops you it's all over so you have to create a new bet and you have to be a certain distance you have to throw within a certain amount of seconds and the idea of having to go through that prison while simultaneously passing that ball, having her turn off the lights, there were some scummy moves. I mean, from bribing of the guard to basically remove the ball, which I loved how she used her strands, her yarn to kind of like bring it back, to just everything like that. I mean, it came to the point where I was thinking there's no way that they're going to be able to finish the bet naturally. And when I saw her just aura aura a baseball into her face repeatedly to the point that she was a pinata spewing money, Holy shit, that was incredible. Like, I didn't think anyone was actually going to die from this character, but at the same time, Marilyn Manson was such a force to be reckoned with in terms of that bet that it had to either you kill the stand user or beat her to basically near death, or you somehow do a thousand throws, and honestly, that wasn't looking likely with them being in a prison. And that's what I love about the prison setting for JoJo, because it humbles powerful people into really thinking outside the box, more so if they were just in the grand opening and they only had to worry about random spectators. It's really cool to see how they escalated that and ultimately got a cash reward, but also kind of saved the day, all things considered as well. When it came to episode 10, which is the first part, when we get introduced to even more information with Emporio, because there's been some like questions I've had about how this kid's been like traversing because sometimes things just appear. Turns out his stand about kind of like having ghost rooms and ghost objects, like the idea that he can eat and drink these things that he can basically pull from the ghost realm, 
they taste good, but they're not going to be able to be consumed. And the idea of like the trash can, at one point we see how this trash can gets like warped and all three of them are standing inside. It definitely explains quite a lot on the earlier episodes, which I'm always glad with Jojo. If something weird happens, almost always they come back to it or they explain it within that weird moment of what's going down. And it was interesting because at this point, they can't keep the diss on them. Originally, I thought they could with Foo Fighters, but we see why. I mean, stand users like Marilyn Manson were able to locate the diss even though it was inside Foo Fighters. So what can they do? Ultimately, got to give it to the organization. And despite it being a risky move of talking on the phone, which is clearly recorded, and clearly Father's going to be able to listen in on that, and White Snake's going to come a-knocking, it's the only move you have. So the frantic escalation of bribing and running and basically avoiding fighting because you have to get there in 20 minutes, it's basically that urgent. It's pretty fun. Weather Report was awesome because I wasn't expecting to hear his voice at all, but it was nice to hear the little bit of voice acting we did get, which I thought was excellently well done. Controlling the weather. It's a simple premise, but sometimes you don't need to be the most crazy and creative to make a stand interesting. It can be something like controlling weather. And as we saw with the piano and how it like, you know, the rain droplets kind of like hit all the keys with the pens falling, you can do some crazy things, but also... It doesn't mean things are going to be a slam dunk either. What I love about JoJo is how it never misses a beat. I think it steadily gets better each part. That's how I felt pretty much ever since I started watching. I mean, with Golden Wind, I was like, holy shit, this is absolutely what I want to see from JoJo going forward. And seemingly, Stone Ocean is doing that. I think just seeing how the abilities actually work, especially with like Jumping Jack and the gravity and seeing everything flow, really getting a sense of how helpless Jolene was when she was trying to use her abilities. I think stuff like that could be difficult in a manga. Now, I haven't read the manga, but I have heard in every single part, basically, there's always at least a handful of people who say that it's hard to comprehend the power sometimes, but the anime makes it easier. And moments like Jumping Jack and Jolene definitely kind of explain that, in my opinion. Even if for you, when you read it, I mean, you could definitely see how some people reading probably could be like, okay, I don't really see why it's so helpless and things like that, because with animation, you get that kind of like rotation and gravity, the lack of weight and things like that. Sure, you get a couple of questionable 3D models with the old Jumping Jag, but for the most part, they really nailed it with that animation to really show just from, you know, beating a bloody pulp with a baseball to then basically floating for your life knowing that clock is ticking down. It's pretty frightening. For me, JoJo is just an absolute ride. I'm really glad that I'm doing these in these two episode videos because it really not only lets me feel fulfilled every time I get up here and talk, because JoJo is one of those things that is an addiction. And I know, waiting a few months for the next batch of episodes, it's going to be a long wait. But having two episodes at a time to bite into, and I've had many viewers of mine also say, like, that's what they're doing alongside these videos, which is great to see. It really gives me enough fulfillment that I feel full but I'm still eager to dive into the next couple. And I really like watching it like that. And I think it'll be so interesting because if they do end in the way that I think they are, either with failure or victory, getting that disc to the foundation, there's going to be some hell to pay. Because not only is that phone call guaranteed going to be passed on over to old White Snake there, they also are going to slap on at least five more years to her prison sentence, which it doesn't matter as long as she gets the other disc. She can break out at any time, really. It's just a matter of, like, well, she needs to stick by there. So the more time she adds on, the further she'll be restricted, and the more difficult it will be to get that last disc. So there's all these different elements at play. The prison setting, the theme, I am loving it. It's without doubt my favorite JoJo theme because I just love prison environments, especially when it comes to restricting powerful characters like them and giving powerful abilities to insane people who deserve to be locked away. Some crazy shit on the horizon. Foo Fighters is definitely rising up my rankings of my favorite character. Might even be my favorite character at this point. Shit's good, and I'm excited to do the last video as well. But let me know your thoughts and feelings on either the crazy game of catch or weather report and everything that went down with Jumping Jack. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. Since the next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.